the next item of business is a statement by Michael Matheson on update on point of order, Martin Whitfield. I'm very grateful, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I apologise for taking the indulgence of the Chamber over this, but in, under our standing orders, Rule 13.2 deals with ministerial statements. And indeed, under the Scottish Ministerial Code, Section 3.5 deals and states that ministers should ensure that important announcements of government policy are made in the first instance to the Parliament. This morning, at First Minister's question, the very positive news of an inquiry over the incidents that the statement will go on to deal with um, was confirmed. However, it was available in nationally published uh, newspapers yesterday, along with a statement that was confirmed by the First Minister this morning that indeed it was discussed at the Scottish Government Cabinet meeting this week. I am disappointed that again we have had information that has been put out into the public domain before being announced to this Parliament. But in this particular case, because of the victims of this surgeon and these events, they should have had the right to hear a full and proper statement explaining what was happening, rather than just snapshots and headlines of news, which I think is disingenuous to them, and I think it is disrespectful to this chamber. And I seek your guidance on what can be done about that matter. Um, can I thank Martin Whitfield for prior notice of his uh, point of order, as he says the guidance on announcements is intended to ensure uh, that matters of importance do not enter uh, the public domain before or without uh, being communicated to the Parliament. I would invite the Government to reflect on the concerns expressed by uh, Mr Whitfield, that information suggesting that a public inquiry into the uh, case of Professor El Jamel uh, was to take place appear to have been reported in the media prior to the First Minister's uh, announcement in the Chamber earlier today. But with that, I am going to move on. Point of order, Stephen Kerr. Given the fact, Deputy President, also that we all know what's in the statement, would it not be in order for us to proceed straight to questions? I thank Mr Kerr the... for his... Allow me please to respond to the point of order rather than taking it upon yourselves to do so. Um, as far as I'm aware, the detail of what is in the statement has not been put in the public domain and therefore I don't think it serves any useful purpose to go straight to questions. I invite Michael Matheson uh, to provide a statement on the update on Professor El Jamel NHS Tayside. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions on the issues raised in his statement afterwards. Therefore, there should be no uh, interventions or interruptions. And I call on Michael Matheson, Cabinet Secretary, up to 10 minutes, please. Thank you, President Officer. There can be few things more important than the safety of patients in our health service. One thing, one thing that is perhaps equally critical is the trust that we as individuals and communities can have in our health care. Patients must also have trust that where concerns are raised about their care and treatment, those will be investigated and the necessary actions taken. They must uh, be able to trust that their concerns will be investigated, scrutinised and subject to robust governance and due diligence at the time and not several years later. When trust is broken and such weak weakness in governance identified, it is imperative that we do all we can to investigate why and do all we can to prevent other others from having the same kind of distress and traumatic experience. The actions some year ago, years ago by Mr Eljamal, a former surgeon in NHS Tayside, have been discussed at length in this chamber and I know colleagues have a keen interest in the government's next steps. Several reviews have taken place into his practice, both at the time and in the years since, after concerns were expressed by a number of his former patients. The latest NHS Tayside review, due diligence review of documentation held relating to El Jamal, laid bare the failings in NHS Tayside response to concerns about Mr El Jamal. It is clear from the review that these were not acted upon or followed up with the urgency and rigour that they deserve. Now, several years later, many former patients still live with the consequences and still have many unanswered questions. That is why today I am announcing our intention to commission a full public inquiry 
to seek answers to those questions. Mr El Jamil practised as a consultant neurosurgeon at NHS Tayside between 1995 and 2013. Concerns about his practice were first raised to NHS Tayside in 2011 and in 2012. As a result of a complaint received at the end of 2012, two further complaints received in 2013 and two significant clinical event analyses, NHS Tayside commissioned the Royal College of Surgeons in England to review his practice. Most complaints were received after Mr Eljamel had been suspended in 2013. Since then, several reviews have taken place into his practice. Members will know that one of my predecessors as Health Secretary Jean Freeman commissioned in March 2021 an independent case note review on outstanding concerns of two former patients. This reported in May 2022 and made several recommendations for NHS Tayside, Scottish Government and for NHS Scotland. In response, NHS Tayside commissioned the due diligence review in March of this year. And this was considered by the Board on Thursday, the 31st of August 2023. I will say more about the detail of this review in a moment. In the months while this work was being undertaken, several former patients continued to raise concerns about their prior care and treatment. This was done directly with NHS Tayside, through MSPs, with ministers and in the media. I have considered the concerns raised with me by several former patients, and I have been struck by their bravery and their persistence, sometimes accompanied by significant distress and compounded by trauma. Nevertheless, I was not at first persuaded of their argument that only a full public inquiry would find the answers they sought about what happened to them and why. Knowing the length of time that could take and knowing that it would not necessarily consider each individual patient's circumstances, I was of the view that there were other potentially faster and more individually responsive ways to seek to answer the questions, that, to seek to find the answers for what they were looking for. However, as I have already touched on, after considering the findings of the due diligence review, my view has significantly changed. I would like to offer some detail on the due diligence review process and what specifically it found that has informed my thinking. Earlier this year, NHS Tayside began to examine their own handling of these concerns. Last Thursday, their board considered this report. It outlines a number of failings that I believe can only be examined thoroughly by a full public inquiry. It also brings forward significant information not previously known to the Scottish Government. Given the length of time since the first concerns were raised about Mr El Jamal, this raises real concerns. Briefly, the due diligence review identified the NHS Tayside did not respond to the General Medical Council about Mr Jamal's request for voluntary erasure from the medical register, that there were no effective central board oversight or coordination of significant historical information or reviews into concerns. It identified multiple examples of reviews and investigations where there was no follow-up action recorded and no or inadequate scrutiny assurance or supporting governance. They identified cases where, despite there being complaints, adverse events reported and legal claims, no formal review of cases have been documented or retained. That documents of potential relevance were subject to destruction in accordance with routine retention periods. When putting a hold on such destruction, would have been better supported, would have better supported subsequent review processes. It identified adverse events where no investigations can be identified and no reports of adverse events were formally recorded until several months following the incident. 
and that communications and support for former patients was not consistently of the required standard. I have reflected on the concerns of former patients and MSPs since the findings were considered by the Board of NHS Tayside, and I am clear that the Board's governing obligations were repeatedly not implemented in respect of concerns about Mr El Jamal. I consider that this now means that the commissioning of a full public inquiry under the terms of the Inquiries Act 2005 with the powers to compel witnesses is the only route to get to the bottom of who knew what and when and what contributed to the failures described by NHS Tayside. Let me say at this point that I know that this will inevitably be a lengthy process and that, as I said earlier, a full public inquiry will not necessarily answer the individual clinical questions for each former patient about their own particular circumstances. For that reason, I still do consider that an independent case review of patients' individual clinical cases, whether that is what, where that is what individual patients want, remains necessary. This will allow a person-centred, trauma-informed review of each patient's own clinical case, addressing their individual needs and circumstances and attempting to offer answers in a bespoke and personalised way that an inquiry will not. There are former patients who are still living each day with the consequences of their treatment by Mr El Jamal and addressing their personal needs in an individual clinical review that is conducted independently of NHS Tayside remains an important part of this process. I want this to begin as soon as possible and not to be delayed by the announcement of an intention to commission a public inquiry. Officer, for the sake of those patients directly affected, for the confidence of the community in Tayside and for the promotion of patient safety more broadly across Scotland, I now believe a full public inquiry is needed. I have now asked my officials to begin to make the necessary arrangements and I will continue to update Parliament as these arrangements progress. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow 20 minutes, around 20 minutes for this, after which we will need to move on to the next item of business. And I can advise the Chamber we are quite tight for time over the course of the afternoon. I would invite members who have not already done so, but who wish to ask a question, to press the request to speak buttons. And I call first Liz Smith. Uh, thank you. Presiding officer, for the last 10 years in this Parliament, I have listened to some of the most harrowing stories that I have ever heard of intense and permanent medical and psychological pain, of families broken apart, and of heart-rending accounts of victims' attempts to get to the truth, only to be knocked back at every turn. This Cabinet Secretary has finally accepted that the only way to get to that truth is to commission a full independent inquiry. And like the former patients who deserve so much credit for their relentless campaigning, most especially Mrs Jules Rose and Mr Pat Kelly, I very much welcome this change of heart. But can I ask the Cabinet Secretary three things? Firstly, as well as the apologies that have rightly been made to individual patients for the harm that they've suffered, will the Cabinet Secretary also apologise on behalf of successive Cabinet Secretaries for Health that the process has taken so many years, thereby just prolonging the agony for the victims of El Jamel? Secondly, does the Cabinet Secretary accept that there has not only been an utter failure on the part of NHS Tayside, as he has just described, but also the other health agencies to address serial complaints made about those in management who knew exactly what was going on, but who chose to keep quiet. And thirdly, in February 2013, as complaints mounted, we know that neurosurgeons at Ninewells complained to the Royal College of Surgeons that their workload was too great and that as a result of what they, and I quote, said it were external pressures, they were forced to take on extra patients from Fife to try to cut waiting times. So can the Cabinet Secretary confirm if that external pressure to take on these extra patients came from the Scottish Government? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you, President Officer. And can I um, uh, put on record my recognition of Liz Smith's um, uh, long-standing interest in pursuing this issue on behalf of her own constituents? And I 
uh, recognise the significant impact that Mr Elgemel has had on individual patients, both in terms of their physical and mental well-being as a result of his actions. On the specific points that uh, Liz Smith raised, of course, I deeply regret that we are in a situation where we even require to have a public inquiry for such a matter. And that's why I have come to the view, and you'll be aware of my previous views on this matter, but why I have reflected on the circumstances and come to the view that I believe a full public inquiry is now required. I was particularly concerned that we were in a situation where, despite eight different reviews that have taken place over an extended period of time, and we were still at a point where the Scottish Government was still learning new information from the Health Board as being an unacceptable state of affairs. And that's why I've come to the view that we need to have a full, detailed public inquiry. Now, in relation to the specific further points that Liz Smith made about other agencies and the issues around workload, these are clearly matters that will be considered by the public inquiry. And at the end of that process, I hope that we will have a greater understanding about who made what decisions when and the impact that had on the delivery of services within NHST side at that time. Jackie Bailey. The announcement of a public inquiry, because a week ago the Scottish Government was not minded to grant the inquiry, so this U-turn is a tribute to the efforts of all those campaigners. I'm very clear that the Health Board and Scottish Ministers have failed in their duty to the people of Tayside, and they failed in their duty to those patients operated on by Sam El Jamel. The issue was formally considered, as I understand it, by the Health Board in February 2014, despite concerns being raised well before this, and what then followed were a litany of reviews and action plans, but little action. So will the Cabinet Secretary put in place an oversight board for NHS Tayside, given the failures in governance that he has acknowledged today? Will he tell us when Scottish ministers were first alerted to the problem, as whilst the issues may indeed be new to him, they weren't new to Shona Robson, the former health secretary, who refused an inquiry, to Jean Freeman, who initiated a case review, and then to be followed by Hamza Youssef himself, who also said no to a public inquiry. And finally, let me welcome the independent case review, and will he ensure that patients affected are supported through the process and consulted on the terms of the inquiry. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign officer, uh, the member will be aware that there is work ongoing just now with NHS Tayside and the recommendations that came from the Scottish Government review back in 2022. That work and the oversight of that has been taken forward by the Scottish Government, by NHS Tayside reporting to the progress that they're making against those recommendations to Scottish Government officials. So there's a continued oversight to make sure that they are making progress with these recommendations going forward. And in relation to Jackie Bailey's point about the terms of reference, it's of course uh, the terms of reference can only be determined once we have a chair appointed for the public inquiry. I'm very clear about the need for patients, affected patients, to be able to feed into the process in setting the terms of reference for the inquiry, and I will take that up with the chair once they're appointed. Thank you. I call Rona Mackay to be followed by Sandra Skolhani. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, as we know, the Scottish Government has previously committed to establishing an independent commission that could engage directly with former patients in order to seek answers as quickly as possible. And I'm pleased to see that this will continue. Can the Cabinet Secretary say any more about how, um, how this can uh, complement the very welcome steps set out by the Scottish Government today? Cabinet Secretary. Absent officer, I have uh, always been very clear in, since I came into post in considering this issue is how we can create a process that helps to give affected patients the answers to the unanswered questions that they have. Uh, and I have always been keen to make sure that whatever approach we take, it ensures that patients and their interests are at the very heart of that uh, process. Uh, what we want to do is to make sure that alongside the public inquiry that we have a person-centred, trauma-informed process that allows those patients, former patients of Mr Jamal, to have the opportunity to have a full clinical review if they feel they wish to have that, and for that to be carried out independently of NHS Tayside. I've already commissioned our National Clinical Director to take forward this work, and we're presently going through the process of looking to identify a lead clinician who can take that work forward for us. Sandra Skolhani to be followed by Jim Fairley. 
Hello, and uh, thank you. And let me start by welcoming this public inquiry for all those I met protesting outside they were asking for. It's clear that across our NHS, senior hospital managers are increasingly interfering with the delivery of good quality clinical care. Complaints of substandard uh, and dangerous practices are being ignored. Whistleblowers are subjected to bullying and intimidation. Lessons are not being learned. Does the Scottish Government agree that NHS managers should be regulated, like doctors and nurses, by an independent body with a legal purpose to protect, promote and maintain the health and safety of the public? Given the urgency, rather than pursue my private member's bill, I'd be happy to work with the Scottish Government to take this forward. I declare my interest Cabinet in an NHS GP. Senator Officer, uh, the member will be aware there is a full public inquiry taking place in England in relation to the Lucy Letby case, uh, which is looking at issues relating to that case, which may result in recommendations around regulation of those who are managers within our National Health Service. And we have already engaged with the Department of Health around that issue, and I am very open to it as being a possible option going forward, but I think we should allow the inquiry to take forward its work, first of all. Can I say gently though to the member here is that this is about more than just uh, managers within NHS Tayside. This is also about the conduct of clinicians within NHS Tayside uh, and the process and way in which clinicians within NHS Tayside have worked that has an impact on how patients have experienced uh, uh, the outcomes that they have. So we must be mindful that this is not just about managers, it's also about the behaviour of clinicians, which is why we need to have a full public inquiry into this matter. Jim Fairley to be followed by Michael Mara. Thank you, President Officer. And I very, very much welcome the decision by the Scottish Government to pursue this public inquiry. Um, but it should never be forgotten that this is only as a result of the behaviour of El Jamel himself. So in light of the horrendous effects that he has had through his malpractice, can the Cabinet Secretary advise what steps can be taken to compel him to appear before this inquiry? Cabinet Secretary. Well, Senior Officer, I'm sure colleagues in the Chamber will be aware there is presently a live police investigation into uh, the harm caused to patients treated by Mr El Jamal. Uh, that's a live investigation, and I know that the Crown Office are already engaged in that process, but I won't comment any more on that. Clearly, the, uh, the, the Public Inquiry, the Inquiries Act, gives powers to compel both documentation and individuals to appear before it. However, my understanding is that Mr El Jamal is out with uh, Scottish and UK jurisdictions uh, and it would be dependent on him actually being willing to return uh, if uh, he is prepared to do so. However, that would be a matter for the inquiry to look at pursuing, but the inquiry will have the powers to be able to compel witnesses and documentation to consider what information it needs in order to carry out a thorough investigation. Michael Mara to be followed by Colette Stevenson. Thank you, President Officer. The Cabinet Secretary's assessment today of NHS Tayside's response in this regard is devastating. Devastating. There are a plethora of recommendations across multiple reviews. I count eight in the, uh, the most recent report uh, that have not been responded to. And I can confirm to the Cabinet Secretary at the meeting of the NHS Tayside Board last week, no board member, no board member raised the fact that there has been such neglect around the implementation of existing recommendations. Why can we have faith, as people who live in Dundee and Tayside, that these recommendations will be put in place. We need that oversight. Will he not consider putting it in place? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President Officer, um, I think the member is correct. There, are, there have been eight reviews since 2013 uh, taken forward, I believe, uh, in relation to uh, this matter, which is why when the Jude Dillon's report was published last week, and when I saw details of that, which resulted in new information being presented that we weren't previously aware of, that raised serious concerns for me. Um, on the openness and the transparency that there has been in the process to date within NHS Tayside. I mentioned to the member the recommendations that came from the review uh, that was carried out in 2022, and there is oversight of that through the Scottish Government on the action plan that is being implemented by NHS Tayside on these matters, and to make sure that they are, that the actions are being progressed. It is important that we get to a point, and I accept the uh, the underlying issue that the member is raising. It is important we get to a point where people have faith and trust within the local health board. And I want to make sure that we look at what further actions we can take in order to try to help to establish that going forward. But I don't want to delay anything that will undermine the process of trying to get answers for patients and getting the public inquiry up and running as quickly as we reasonably can. 
but I will continue to look at what further measures are necessary in order to make sure there is sufficient scrutiny of NHS to side. Colette Stevenson to be followed by Willie Rennie. Uh, thank you, President Officer. We know that many former patients have expressed concerns about how their trust in NHS Tayside has been harmed as a result of this case. So can the Cabinet Secretary say any more about how the steps outlined by the Scottish Government today can help to rebuild that public trust? Cabinet Secretary. Well, President Officer, one of the things that I think is important in recognising the findings of this review is that the medical director, I believe, in NHS Tayside has carried out a very thorough investigation, exposing key aspects of where their own organisation has failed. I think that's a significant step within the health board in itself in being prepared to actually face up to their failings and to accept the consequences that go alongside those. What I, as I mentioned earlier on, I will continue to consider as well as any further measures that we need to put in place in order to make sure that we continue to see progress being made by NHS Tayside and will help to engender confidence in their conduct in dealing with this issue. But as I mentioned, it's important we focus on making sure that we get the clinical review process in place for individual patients and that we continue to make progress in getting the public inquiry established. Willie Rennie to be followed by Jackie Dunbar. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary has made the right decision today. I think the twin track approach is the right one, but I'm afraid it has taken far too long. The patients have suffered throughout that. Physically, they've suffered. Mentally, they've suffered, which he's referred to. But they've also got more angry as time has gone on. So faith and trust that the minister refers to has completely broken down. So I hope that all those who know stuff, know information, come forward now, now that they know that potentially they're going to be compelled to participate in the inquiry, that they release that information now so the patients can have some comfort right now that they can know more about their cases and their suffering. Will the Minister support that? Cabinet Secretary. Yeah, President Officer, I would. Uh, can I also say, I think it's important that we also use this as an opportunity to try to learn for the rest of NHS Scotland. Um, what I want to do is, through this process, is to avoid ourselves finding ourselves in a situation where something similar could happen in our health board area. Uh, and we need to make sure that the safeguards which we have in place, which have obviously changed since the time when Mr El Jamel was a, a, a surgeon in NHS Tayside, uh, that they are sufficient and that they are robust, uh, but also to make sure that we learn from this and that we ensure that this type of incident can't happen again. That would be a key. That's one of the key reasons why I believe it's now right for us to have a full public inquiry. But full disclosure, engagement uh, of all of those parties who do have information, uh, I would encourage them to do that now, and I would encourage them to fully cooperate with the public inquiry once it's established. Jackie Dunbar to be followed by Maggie Chapman. Thank you, President Officer. We can't underestimate the importance of listening to the voices of former patients. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide any update as to the Scottish Government's latest engagement with patients and their representatives, and also the steps that can be taken to ensure that they are involved in the next steps set out by the Cabinet Secretary today? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President Officer, I met with a group of the uh, lead uh, patients earlier on this morning in order to set out uh, my intentions to uh, establish a full public inquiry and also to explain to them the process I was putting in place for individual clinical case reviews. I also took that opportunity to explain to them why I had changed my position from my previous engagement with them on what I thought was the most appropriate course of action and I explained to them why I had chosen to move towards a full public inquiry with the support of the First Minister and my Cabinet colleagues. I can also assure the member that I will take up with the chair once appointed uh, the need to make sure that patient representatives have an opportunity to feed into the terms of reference for the public inquiry. Maggie Chapman to be followed by Stephen Kerr. Thank you. It's a relief that we have at last got to the point of a public inquiry that so many have called for, but it should never have taken this long. And I thank all those campaigners involved in getting us to this point. The Cabinet Secretary spoke of a need for, independence, for, for that twin track to ensure patients could get the answers they need through person-centred, trauma-informed process. What will he ensure is put in place 
so that while these, both, pr these processes both take place, patients and former patients are not further traumatised as they have been and continue to be. Some are currently being re-traumatised by being told to go through mediation and other processes. Cab what can the Cabinet Secretary say to them now to ensure that this Cabinet won't Secretary. continue to happen? Well, sign officer, there obviously there's a process that's been put in place by NHS Tayside. As I've already indicated, my intentions are to establish a process that will allow patients who have uh, uh, clinical questions and issues that they want to be clinically reviewed to have an independent process of NHS Tayside to have their cases reviewed. That will be person-centred and trauma-informed in the way in which it operates. I hope that would reassure the member their intention is to where reviews do take place, it does not re-traumatise patients uh, over uh, the difficult circumstances that they have already uh, gone through. So that's very much in, the, the, in our minds and how we shape that process. And I hope that once we've got it established, that patients will be able to give feedback on how effective that process has been. Thank you, Stephen Kerr. To be followed by Evelyn Tweed. Of course, uh, Deputy President Officer, I welcome the announcement that the Cabinet Secretary has brought to the Chamber this afternoon. But once again, the evidence is that the voices of patients and healthcare professionals were ignored because the first time this matter was raised was as long ago as 2011. It's high time that we saw a change of culture in our public services, especially towards brave and principled people who blow the whistle. So would the Cabinet Secretary agree that in addition to the public inquiry, there ought to be a full review of whistleblowing practices with a view to the establishment of an independent office of the whistleblower for Scotland. Cabinet Secretary. Um, officer, we actually have an independent whistleblower who is based within the, the Scottish Public Service Ombudsman Service uh, that is independent of the Scottish Government uh, that has oversight of whistleblowing policy in Scotland. So I think we've already addressed the point that the member is making. Can I say, and I made this point to Sandy Gohani, and that is that um, this is not just about um, managerial structural failures within NHS Tayside. It's also about clinical failures and the behaviour of clinicians that have had an impact on some of the information that has not been provided to patients and some of the information that has not been provided to the review processes that have been taken forward. That is what I think is particularly important here. This is not just about managers not getting it right. It's also about clinicians getting it wrong as well. And and that's as briefly, why as, as briefly as possible, Evelyn Tweed. Evelyn Tweed. Accountability has been highlighted as one of the key reasons behind calls for a public inquiry. Can the Cabinet Secretary say any more about how the Scottish Government envisages that the measures outlined today deliver on that call? Cabinet Secretary. Well, Officer, it will give us an opportunity to have a very detailed investigation, uh, not just into the actions of NHS Tayside, but actually into some of the regulatory bodies who have a responsibility for oversight of clinicians and also for inspections of our health board. And I believe that will help to identify where the failings have been and also to make sure that we can learn the lessons for NHS Scotland as a whole for the future. Thank you very much, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes this item of business. There will be a brief pause. Point of order, Stephen Kerr. Uh, Mr. Senator, sir, I uh, forgot to mention when I asked my question a reference to uh, reg my register of interest as a director of Whistleblowers UK, which is a not-for-profit which is set up to advocate for whistleblowers and to bring about changes, positive changes in the law regarding whistleblowing. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. That is now on the record. There will be a brief pause while the front benches change. Thank you very much.